Lyndon LaRouche mints no words in his analysis of the current Obama administration. If the United States is to survive, Larry Summers and his policy must go. The Bush administration did much to worsen the crisis up to the minute they left office, but that crisis actually began in 1987. It was October of that year, over two decades ago, that the crash occurred just as Lyndon LaRouche had forecast. It was then that the post Bretton Woods financial system failed, experiencing a crash like that of 1929. Rather than accepting that reality, Alan Greenspan postponed the depression by creating a series of destructive financial bubbles driven at the core by a new class of fictitious financial products called derivatives. The decision then not to accept the failure of the post Bretton Woods system and instead try to paper over the crisis initiated the hyperbolic growth of fictitious assets in a financial sector that no longer had any connection to reality or the real economy. In 1995, LaRouche presented his triple curve forecast, identifying the accelerated divergence between the growth of the financial and monetary aggregates against the collapse of the very physical economic activity which sustains society. That system was destined to blow out from its very beginning. The only question among policymakers was what they could do to postpone and thus worsen the crisis. At the end of the 1990s, the rot of the system burst into the open. In 1997, the so-called Asian financial crisis sent shockwaves through the global markets. This was followed in 1998 with the collapse of the hedge fund long-term capital management. An emergency bailout was pulled together with the fear that if the fund went under, there would be a collapse of the entire world financial system. LaRouche immediately acted, warning that any attempt to try to save that system would result in reckless hyperinflation like that which crushed Weimar Germany in 1923. LaRouche proceeded to lay out the needed recovery, calling for nations to reorganize their relevant institutions as in general bankruptcy. On September 14, 1998, President Clinton gave a speech at the Council on Foreign Relations where he called for an international emergency meeting to discuss the creation of a new financial architecture, saying that the system had to change and the unregulated flow of speculative money worldwide could no longer be tolerated. Key nations like Russia and China were ready, and if the United States would have gone for that change, the global financial system could have been put through a reorganization and replaced then. The world would have been completely different by now, but that clearly did not happen. Inside Washington, sources at the time said that it was Larry Summers who immediately moved to convince Robert Rubin and others around President Clinton to quietly drop all plans for any such meeting for a new financial architecture, a new Bretton Woods conference, because he was concerned it would be undercutting the IMF. Summers instead argued, as the British are arguing today leading into the April G20 conference, that the U.S. should give further backing to the IMF and provide them with even more funds. Then, when LTCM collapsed later that month, Clinton commissioned his working group on financial markets to determine how to deal with the problems posed by derivatives and hedge funds with relation to regular banks. Summers hijacked that committee and presented the final recommendations of that group praising derivatives as an important component of American capital markets, and the working group concluded against controlling hedge funds or derivatives. Summers intervened on behalf of derivative schemes earlier as well, when the Commodity Futures Trading Commission was exploring derivatives regulation in 1997, led by Chairwoman Brooksley E. Bourne. Bourne had said then that derivatives posed not only a threat to the markets, but the entire economy. So, derivatives king Alan Greenspan and Larry Summers, his fat jester, proceeded to do all they could to block any consideration of regulation. It was reported by various sources that Summers called Bourne, threatening that he had 13 of the top lobbyists of the financial world in his office, and that if she moved to regulate the system, she would cause a crash of the markets. After her call with Summers, it was reported that Bourne sat in silence, ashen-faced. So instead of facing the reckoning then, 
the hyperinflationary derivatives and hedge fund operations were perpetuated, leeching off of U.S. physical production. To make matters worse, in 2000, Summers helped ram through a bill to guarantee that the CFTC had no oversight and no authority to regulate derivatives. By July 2007, as LaRouche had forewarned, the system entered its terminal collapse phase, with an estimated quadrillion dollars in useless derivatives claims looming over our heads. A new phase of hyperinflationary madness was launched to pay off those claims by the Bush administration, with bailouts larger than anyone had seen yet. And it looks for now like the Obama administration is continuing that policy in a desperate attempt to save a dead system that will only bring us down with it. People say history repeats itself. It does not. But when a society is governed by false beliefs, and those beliefs keep coming into conflict with an actual reality, it can seem to produce similar crises again and again. But this does not occur as some simple repetition in a Cartesian system or empty space. Rather, without any fundamental change, each manifestation of the conflict becomes more intense, and the entire process develops, eventually reaching a point where only one last choice is to be made, ultimately for better or for worse. The current president is certainly in such a position to make that choice, and his ability to act for the better will depend, first, on casting aside Larry Summers. Whereas other people have admitted they have been wrong in dealing with today's crisis, Summers has continually defended his failure, begging the question of whether he is just plain incompetent or a traitor.